is something that you will take all in when you're done playing and be able to watch with your grandkids. James, what a pass to Russell. You know, I say that I played against one of the best players that ever played this game. Crossover beats him like a drum and ties the game. Every year that we get to do this, it's, it's insane. James falling away, it's up, got it. You can look forward to the battles, but you also appreciate the mutual like respect. Respect factor off the charts. Oh, we keep going this, bro. Oh. Okay. Two legends, two champions, and boy, do they battle here tonight. Oh, I mean, what an epic game Woo. we got this weekend between Steph Curry and LeBron James. It couldn't be contained to regulation or even just one overtime. We yeah. had to get two. Almost and went three. I know, an epic showdown. Welcome to NBA Today when the game is that good. Tim Legler, he has to come to town. Ramona Shelburne, Kendrick Perkins, Brian Windhorst, they're here with us as well. I'm Malika Andrews. Let's take a listen to LeBron James on this epic showdown. It's something that you will um, truly take all in when you're done playing and be able to watch with your grandkids, you know, and say that I played against one of the best players that ever played this game. Um, you know, and Steph, after the game, came to me and said, how does it keep getting better? You know, how do we keep getting better? And, you know, I think it's just a true testament to us uh, putting the work in, in the game, being true to the game, and the game just continue to get back to us. Just uh, you look forward to the battles, but you also appreciate, you know, the mutual, like, respect of what it takes to keep doing what you're doing at this level, because, only a few people know how hard it is. After the horn sounded tonight, like there was a little laugh of, you know, who to, you can't like imagine a scenario where a game like tonight happens. No, you really can't. Perk, was this the game of the year so far? Hell yeah, and they wasn't lying. Look, let me explain something to you. The league has been great. We've been watching 70 pieces put up by people. We've been watching people go for 60 pieces. That's like the circus. That's like you going to the circus and say, oh, I seen the elephant standing on one leg. But when it comes down to Braun and Steph matching up, it's like Disney World, the magical ride, Space Jams. And then you want to talk about the extra? Talk about the food, right? The Mickey beignets and the ooey gooey <laughs> toffee cakes and Not the, the Mickey pretzels. Like this is, yeah, magical kingdom at its finest, right? When these two match up and it was everything and more. You're watching two old heads, right? One is a senior citizen and one is on the verge of being one. Still look like they're in prime, giving us the best moment of Saturday going toe to toe. It was everything. That was Disney World. So wait, I'm supposed to follow ooey gooey, <laughs> elephant on one leg. I don't know how many other references you had in there, Perk. Oh, that's hard to follow that, man. But look, I, I'm going I'm to agree. For, from just a sheer entertainment standpoint, here's what it had in addition to the individual great performances out of these two players it had two teams that need to win yeah so the ramifications of each possession right and the weight that they were carrying mm -hmm. on these trips and these big moments and these these shots that had to be made at that time in the game in order to win the game that's what it had to that element as well look there's some other games I would probably put you know as nominees for best game of the year I thought Denver Boston excellent a lower scoring game that to me just absolutely looked like a finals game this looked like two teams in a regular season desperate to try to win with two great players rising to the occasion to give us another one of those electrifying moments that are going to be indelibly matching our, match our heads yeah. for the rest of their careers. And that's what they gave us. And so let's appreciate it. It's not the first time that we've seen them go head to head, though, Tim, with something on the line. If we count, and I know this goes out into the statistical ether, mm -hmm. but if we were to count that 2021 play in game, right? Yep. Uh, that's this would be the 50th time, right, oh. that these mm. two have gone head to head. Wow. So Brian Winhorst, you've had a front row seat to many of these. I'm not going to say all 50 of them, <laughs> but in the words of LeBron James, how do they keep doing this yeah well I'm going to count that play in game Malika and I'm going to talk to you about the most memorable times they match up and by the way a lot of them were in overtime and it was just really uh, so fitting it goes all the way back I'm going to take you back to the first finals game they played against each other in 2015 that game went to overtime too with the Warriors winning that had 13 lead changes, 11 ties. LeBron had 44 points back when scoring 40 points meant something. He and Curry back and forth in the fourth quarter of this game throwing haymakers. LeBron almost won it at the buzzer. It ended up being the start of an intense series. Then the next year, who could forget game seven? Right. 2016 finals, the greatest game probably in the NBA of the last decade. LeBron and Steph going back and forth with their teams really launched a, a whole bunch of things. 
Then let's go to one of the games that's easy to forget, but was all-time classic. 2018, another overtime game. This is remembered as the J.R. Smith meme game, but <laughs> LeBron had 51 in this game. 51 again back when that was a real thing. Then how about the 2021 uh, play-in game? You might forget Steph had 37. LeBron had a triple-double getting into the playoffs, ended the Warriors season. That was obviously a big-time memorable game. And then this one that we just had on Saturday, this has got to go into the list. The double overtime, mm. LeBron goes for 30, 20, 10. First type of that game for the Lakers since the 70s with Kareem. Steph is awesome throughout the game. Uh, they go all the way down to overtime. Looked like Steph was going to win it. Then LeBron makes the play at the end. And of course, these two guys are going to remember this one for a long time. Yeah, I mean, the fact that this is already going on the Mount Rushmore of games that we've seen these two guys play, you can see head-to-head -head where all of this totals up. Steph having the edge with wins, 27 of their 50 meetings between the regular season, the playoffs, the play-in, including a 17-11 to 11 edge in the postseason. But... LeBron James and the Lakers, they walked away with a win in this latest showdown. Steph, remember, he hit a go-ahead three with like 5.2 seconds left to put the Warriors up by one. This is how Steph Curry exited the court after LeBron James went to the line, made those free throws, essentially sealed the game. He ripped his jersey on the way off. We don't usually see this type of emotion on the floor from Steph Curry. He was asked about his frustration after the game. Our whole season, we've had you know, some tough breaks, some self-inflicted wounds, some games that, you know, obviously you should have should have won. And there's disappointment walking over the floor. And, like, tonight is a night where you feel like you played well enough to win, almost like the sack game. And, again, have nothing to show for it. You know, it just shows that we, we, we really want it. We're playing with a little bit of desperation, trying to, you know, change the tide of our season. And just don't have nothing to show for it right now. Sermona, last week you said that nothing is going to happen in Golden State until Steph Curry is cool with it. But when you look at that frustration, is this the point that he should be cool with it, that something's going to happen? I actually think that that game was very encouraging for the Warriors. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll stand on that, that I don't think anything happens in Golden State without Steph Curry. You know, I don't know if he says it, if he says it directly with a wink or a nod through his agent, whatever it is, but they're not going to make any moves to that core and break up that, that dynastic team unless he's on board with that idea. Um, Brian, you and I have covered LeBron so many years. You know, I, I think they operate a little differently when it comes time to make really hard decisions, and I don't think Steph wants to be involved in those decisions right now, but I thought Klay Thompson was good in that game. Mm. He made a huge shot in that game. Draymond looked great in that game. He said, he, you know, all, behind every single one of those Steph threes was a Draymond on bone crushing screen right. setting that up he also allows them to play Kaminga and Andrew Wiggins together I think that you can't normally do that with play those two guys together when you can when you have a player as smart as Draymond Green and so I think I think Steph like as much as you saw that frustration I've never seen him rip his jersey I've seen him throw the mouthpiece yeah Mouthpieces. That, that's that's, that's why Tim it stood out. Yeah. Because he's done a little arm work. You can <laughs> see, right? right? He looked a little bit Upper jacked. Body in that. Yeah, he was, but he didn't get all but the way down. He couldn't get all the way through. Player. It. No, he no, was no. exhausted. Like no, when no. you were watching that game, Tim, didn't you think he he looked he would sit on the bench during timeouts like, oh my God, I need these 30 seconds to recover. Man, I felt sorry for him. I really did. I yeah. had empathy for him watching the game. And and this right here, this reaction, what that is, is what the stat they just put at the bottom of the screen yeah. when he was speaking, 32 of these games they've been in. 32 games, Woo. one possession games late. More than any other team in the NBA. And right. they have come up short too many times in games that they are used to winning. So what that does is it's, it's a gut punch. It's one more gut punch. And on a night when he played that way yeah. and made that many big plays down the stretch, historically, since Steph Curry got there, they win those kind of games, and they're not anymore. And I think that's where the frustration's coming out because it's been too often this year <coughs> he feels like, what more can he possibly do? And they walk off the floor frustrated in a late-game defeat. That's what that was. I, I agree with Ramona, though. I, I just think right. your options are limited in what you're going to do. I got to tell you, yeah. though, I don't think that Kendrick Perkins is as patient as you yeah. do. Am I right about that, Perk? I'm not, because my next question is, what's next, right? If, if, okay, if Steph could go out there and put up a 46-piece wing then and they still lose, and you see his frustration, then what's next? If he's not going to go to the front office and he's not going to want to make these hard, these hard, tough decisions, 
then what's next? You're just gonna let the season ride out and say, you know what, we're gonna make this our last run. We know we're not going anywhere, but let's continue to bring, uh, bring along Jonathan Kaminga and teach him the game. We cannot continue to waste Steph Curry prime. And we're seeing this man do everything and more that he possibly can to try to just get one win. And right now, when I look at it, I'm like, damn, they only one game above the Memphis Grizzlies right now who have been missing damn near their entire starting lineup. Right. And so I'm thinking about it, I'm like, okay, if it's not going to be a trade, if Steph is not going to voice his opinion, then what the hell is next for the Golden State Warriors this season? What is next, Brian? Yeah, so Perk and I have been on the opposite sides of this for a month or so now. Perk has been saying, like, this is over, break it up. Yeah. I've been preaching patience. I, I got to admit, my case is weakening, Perk. My case is weakening. They're five games under uh -oh. 500. I do think Ramona is right. You know, you look at their last two losses. They lost by one to the Kings, and they yeah. lost by, you know, two to the Lakers. It's not like they're getting blown off the court. The problem is, is that the most tradable piece they have, really, is Wiggins. Wiggins is playing average to below average basketball right now. If they traded him, they'd either have to incentivize or they'd get back average-ish players. And I'm not sure it's truly an upgrade. So uh, I'm not saying that they're that you know that they that there's something that can be done. I just don't think there's a better option other than hoping that that record turns around and getting Chris Paul back. And I know that hoping isn't what you want to say at the end of January, but I think it's the best of a lot of bad options. Yeah, I think, listen, here's mm. the problem. When you start talking about breaking it up, you have to be realistic about what the return is going to be and what that's going to look like. So it, I understand we might think that, hey, this team can't contend for a championship and you've got Steph Curry on your roster. You're supposed to be doing that. The problem is, what are we talking about? Jettisoning off you know, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, Kaminga, like anybody's for sale. And if that's the case, what are you getting back? Younger players, less accomplished players that are going to take more time to season alongside Steph Curry. I mean, that, that pushes this thing out even further into the future. So that's where I just think it's a really tough spot to be in. And I don't think these internal conversations start easily when you start talking about Draymond Green and Clay Thompson and what right. they've meant to the organization, particularly Clay. I mean, despite how he's played this year, some players and what they've meant to the organization, they outlive those conversations. They've almost surpassed the ability to even initiate those because it's just what it is. The guys meant too much to them, and unfortunately, so, they're not good enough to compete or contend. But what you're going to get back won't put you there either, Perk, I don't believe. So, so no, but, but, my question, but my question again is, what's the answer? Because to me, it, it looked like they're steady going down a downward slope. They play the 76ers tomorrow, and then they're going on, this, on the road trip that they're about to start. So my thing is, it's not like they're trending upward, and it's no more victories when it comes down to the Warriors. I don't care if they lost by one or, or, or lost by 100. A loss is a loss, and they don't have room to be losing games in the tough Western Conference. Yeah, the West right now, there is just no room for error, particularly for the Golden State Warriors as they're clawing to get back even into just play-in contention. Hey, before we go to break, some breaking news here out of the Eastern Conference. Joel Embiid. He was, we were wondering if we were going to see him tonight against the Portland Trailblazers, but Ramona, now that's not the case, what more can you tell us? Yeah, he, you know, he's just managing this knee injury, and, and I think he fully intended to try to play in Denver. He was the one who said to the team, I'm playing, don't even put me on the injury report. But that knee is, is, a, is an issue that he's going to have to manage for the rest of the season. Mm. And there's swelling in there. He couldn't even jump before the Denver game. I know he took a lot of flack for all that, but he's not going to play again against Portland. They have a back-to-back, -back, so it's Portland tonight. Golden State the next game yep. and and every time we talk about whether he plays or not plays we're, we're, we're subtracting from that 65 game total right we're inching towards that yeah. at this point he can only miss five more games to still be eligible for the MVP award we're